talk about my favorite thing to do this time of the year, late summer, early fall, and that is throwing poppers for bass. And when people think of what I do, they often say, well, you're a nymph fisher. And yeah, I do a little bit of nymph fishing for trout, but first and foremost, I just love to fish. And while I do consider myself to do more trout fishing than anything else, I love the surface action and I like big fish. And for me, this time of the year, that often means chasing smallmouth on some of my local waters. And I just want to share a few tips, some of the tactics um, I've been doing for the last seven years. The first part is the leader formula. When you are throwing poppers, surface flies for that, for that matter, you need a leader that is robust. It's got a thick butt section that can help turn over these wind resistant flies. And you can buy these manufactured from SA, Orvis and other companies, or you can build your own. And that's what I do most of the time to keep it simple because bass popper leaders, in my opinion, can be very simple. And it's just a three part leader and it's the 60 20 20 rule and the whole idea is that 60 percent of your leader is going to be butt section followed by the short transition period the 20 percent that goes to your tippet which is the other 20 percent if you find yourself in a situation where when you're casting these wind resistant flies you're starting to get pigtails basically indicating that your leader is just too long or maybe a little too soft for the flies that you're fishing you may want to shorten up your leader but the three leader part leader that i'm using right here very simple 60% of my leader is going to be 60 pound test or 50 pound test nylon. And then I do a clench, uh, a surgeon's knot or a blood knot to a section of 15 pound test. It's a quick jump, but you can do that. That is my transition, my 15 pound test. And then my last 20%, which is my tippet, is often going to be anything from a 10 to a 12 pound test fluorocarbon tippet. Very simple but very good. And again, if you start getting those pigtails, just shorten up the tippet is all you need. And I'm not gonna give you the exact formula here because you need to figure that out for yourself in your home waters. You may have higher water, you're throwing poppers where you can use a short leader any from anywhere from like five to six foot. And then there's been conditions where we've had really low water, very skittish fish. You may need to use a leader that's anywhere on upward from eight to nine foot. It's a little bit more challenging, but sometimes absolutely necessary. But Kind of following that 60 20 20 rule is often a very good start so types of patterns i'm using i keep my surface flies very simple and i'm not a, i'm not a bass guide i just do this recreational so i just keep this very very simple and i feel like this covers your bases for top water like 90 percent of the time so three types. Basically, I have a boogle bug. I have a just basically a foam popper with some rubber legs. And then we have what they call almost like a, a Mr. Wiggly. And this is almost a, a kind of a variation of a Chernobyl ant, kind of a smaller fly. And we're going to talk about this in just a moment. But the whole idea and the way I like to look at it is you kind of match the conditions, whether you have spooky fish, dirty water, whatever it is, with the amount of impact that this fly is going to make on the water. So the boogle bug is awesome for when you're fishing dirty water, you're fishing deep water. Any situation where you don't feel like those fish are really skittish or they're going to get alert or spook anytime something hard hits the water. So a lot of what I like to throw is the boogle bug. And then it's starting, as soon as you start seeing fish spook, at this fly landed on the water and it's going to start happening sometimes when you as soon as you start getting those first couple days of really low water and angling pressure that is where i'm going to switch to just a basic foam popper something that it can be a square head i still like my square head poppers something that's going to push a little bit of movement but when this thing lands it's going to land a lot softer and this is just one of the biggest keys is just understand when this starts spooking fish you need to transition over to something that's going to land a little bit softer like a foam bug and then Often in the most dire, most extreme conditions, when you have really low skinny water, this is where the Mr. Wiggly, something like this, where it's even gonna make less of an impact than your foam popper is gonna land on the water. So three different sizes and basically three different levels of impact. The Boogle Bug for normal conditions, 
the foam popper for when the fish start getting selective and spooky. And then the, the Mr. Wiggly when things, in my opinion, get really, really tough. How you fish your poppers. You know, when you hear about poppers and surface flies, you think pop, okay, I'm gonna make the cast, I'm gonna go pop, pop, pop. At least in my home waters, that's one of the worst things you can do, especially in low clear water. Essentially, you just want this fly to make a little bit of an impact, and then you just wanna twitch it, give it a little bit of movement, but don't overplay this fly. Don't over pop the fly in that matter. And uh, in that new book called Smallmouth Bass, uh, Tim and his whole crew did an amazing job explaining the concept of how the fish poppers on the surface. And the idea is this, is just don't overplay or overwork your fly. So what, that, what they mean by that is when your fly lands, you're going to see the fly come in contact, make an impact on the water. And you're going to see this ring start expanding based on the impact of the fly. One of the things or the concepts that they use is that once the fly lands in the water, just let it sit. They call it basically let it marinate or saturate in the water. As soon as the fly lands, you're going to see those rings spread out. They often, in the, when the conditions are tough, they will not move that fly at all until the rings dissipate or completely are gone. So you make a cast and it may be a couple seconds, but you'll see the rings drift, the weight, and then just slowly lift the rod tip, get the fly just to move just a little bit, get the legs moving, get that surface fly to kind of create a little bit of a wake, and then they're gonna stop, let the rings spread, let them dissipate. So it's a very, very slow presentation. And that is one of the, the best tips I can give you straight from those guys uh, that wrote the book on smallmouth modern tactics, is just letting this fly saturate, marinate in the water, hit the water, let the rings dissipate and then lift slowly but just don't overwork this fly this is one of the best tips especially in low clear water is that when you're casting longer lengths and right now we have kind of lower flows typical lower flows for this early fall here is that when you make a cast 30 40 feet out I'm going to intentionally, it may not be as comfortable, but I'm going to extend my hand and my rod, my line hand out. So when a fish does strike, the whole idea is I'm going to lift hard and fast. The further my hand is out, the more line I can lift before I snap my wrist to make that hook set. If you make your cast and you kind of keep your hand in, into a comfortable position, when you're stripping, it's just going to be kind of this just short little wristy movement. You're not going to be able to create or pull more line off the water before you, you snap that wrist to make that hook set. But by just simply extending your hand out and then lifting the line, you're going to be able to pick up a lot more line off the water before you snap that wrist to make that hook set. So anytime you have any line and leader on the water, whether you're indicator fishing, whether you're smallmouth bass fishing for poppers or dry flies for trout, try to lift the hand out, extend that hand out, lift, start lifting the forearm up, start lifting the line off the water, and then snap the wrist to make that hook set. And that I find is probably one of the biggest keys to getting a good hook set when you have excessive line on the water. Right, Ray? Okay, so let's give it a shot. And when you do move the fly, it's just a smooth lift, controlled lift. We don't wanna use a lot of wrist and put slack in the line right here. So when you do need to move the fly, hand here and then just smoothly lift and stripping lines, you're dropping the rod tip. So when the rod tip's back down, the fish does eat, then you've got the area and the control to set the hook. So again, we're gonna make this cast. And this is no secret. This is just simple line control principles right here. I'm not sure what that was. Now, again, smaller fish. But what we're gonna do here, just pretend that that fly's still on the water. The wakes are calming down. We're gonna lift. And as I drop my rod tip, I'm going to strip in line. So when the line, my rod tip is back down, I have control. One of the things you don't want to do is quickly lift the rod tip and then drop the rod tip and have slack. That's when the fish is going to strike and you're not going to be able to set the hook. So again, we're just going to make this nice little cast. Let the fly just kind of saturate there. And then we're going to just kind of just wake it a little bit. Drop the rod tip, long strip with the line hand, lines nice and tight. I have control drift lift little wake drop the rod tip and have control but limit that slack and this is also why 
I like using lines that contrast against the color of the water so I can focus on the bug but if I see slack accumulating right there it just tells me I need to strip in a little bit more line but having a straight line off the rod tip before that hook set is just an absolute must for control. Strip, a little bit of slack there on the front end, kind of a crappy cast. Wake, strip. And there you are.